good day to all. Um, I am Dr. Lalita, Postgraduate Department of Commerce, Srimati Dev Kunwar Nana Lal Bhatt Vaishnav College for Women. Uh, here to present the topic on financial management. Under that, I am going to discuss the topic called as capital budgeting decision. Okay. So before going in for capital budgeting decision, uh, I'll just come out with what are the learning objectives that you will get out of this session. So you'll just come to understand, to know the nature and importance of investment decision. And of course, you'll be uh, knowing the concept called as payback period, discounted payback period, and accounting rate of return method. And apart from that, there are certain discounting methods like then present value method, IRR method, and profitability index method. And out of these, the significant methods are NPV and IRR. So these things you will just try to understand out of my session. Uh, so first and foremost, I just want to tell about what do you mean by financial management. So everybody knows that finance is an important component, uh, which is an oil to the business as such. Uh, for all the activities to be carried out, a finance is the essential aspect. It is a central focal point around which all the other activities are bound that we know very well. And of course, we also know that finance is a scarce resources. So that scarce resources has to be utilized very effectively. So that's what, what we call it as a financial management is all about. So management in simple terms, the managing the changes. Okay, you you will not go as per plans as such. So things will change depending upon an economic, depending upon social environment, depending upon the political environment. So depending upon that, there will be a changes. So that changes you need to adopt and you need to carry out the things. So that is what is what we call it as a management. So ultimately, financial management is nothing but is one kind of managerial activity which is concerned with planning and controlling of the firm's financial resources. Okay, uh, so at the time that is, uh, it had been from the earlier part. So uh, from 19, 1890 to 1920, it had been, we never had a separate discipline called as financial management. It had been a part and parcel of your economics. Okay, then later on what they felt is we need to give a separate discipline for your finance aspect. So henceforth they just formulated the concept called this corporate finance in 1920. So between 1920 to 1950 we had been calling by the name called this corporate finance. So what had been the use of your corporate finance is nothing but the finance manager job during that period is he will be providing the finance that is required by various other departments. Okay, so ultimately he will be deciding about the quantum of finance, okay, uh, the pattern of financing and the legal requirements. So that's what it has been dealt. But the finance that has been procured, how it has been effectively used or not, maximum performance has been made or not, they will not be uh, considering in corporate finance. Henceforth, they felt it important, important in 1950 and they, they changed the terminology from corporate finance to financial management okay so what they felt is the finance that has been procured so so much of effort has been taken to procure finance so that finance has to be used properly has to be effectively managed okay so henceforth we got the terminology called as financial management so ultimately the mantra is we have a minimum the scarce resources we should get a maximum use of it Okay, so what is the uh, uh, nature or the job of the financial manager is he must see that the risk, cost and control are properly balanced and there had been an optimal utilization of funds. So what do you mean by risk, cost and control? Say for example, there are two type of companies. Okay, they are already running company. They need an additional fund of 10 lakh rupees. Both the companies are in need of the additional funds of 10 lakh rupees. Okay, let us just come into a conclusion that the first company is raising the money through equity shares. The second company is raising the money through debentures. Okay, so when you just look at with regarding to, uh, and I believe that you people know what is the nature of equity shares and your debentures. So debentures are the creditors of the company, equity shareholders are the owners of the company. Okay, so ultimately it becomes mandatory on the part whether they are getting an income or not, they should compulsorily pay them the interest. Okay, so risk is more when you just take in with regarding to the second company. Okay. 
with regarding to the uh, cost aspect which is costlier one is nothing but equity share capital is a costlier one whereas debenture is considered to be a cheapest source of finance why it is considered to be a cheapest source of finance is because we have the tax advantage okay and apart from that we pay them only a fixed rate of interest it will not vary depending upon your profit okay and when you just look into the control aspect the first company loses its control because it has been shared by the other equity shareholders whereas the second company doesn't loses its control so you have to the financial manager has to make a trade off between all these three aspects the risk cost and control in whatever the decision that he is taking it up okay so let us just move to the next slide so it talks about the important finance functions so there are majorly three important decision that has to be taken by the financial manager so the first one is investment decision the second one is financing decision the third one talks about dividend decision so what is investment decision the money that you're going to procure okay how much you're going to invest in long term assets how much you're going to invest in working capital so that talks about the concept called as investment decision so it is under this we just read about your capital expenditure budget that is capital budgeting which you are going to look into detail okay then the next function is nothing but next decision that is important is financing decision so financing decision is the money that you needed through what source you are going to get that finance okay through through what all securities you are going to raise that finance so that is what is what we call it as a financing decision so you will talk about capital structure over there and the last one the money that you have earned how much you are going to declare it as dividend to the equity shareholders and how much you are going to retain so these are the three important decision that will be taken into consideration by the finance manager okay we are going to look into detail with regarding to the investment decision right so under investment decision as i just told you earlier okay two things one is in long term investment the other one is short term so when it's going to be a long term you call that as a capital budgeting or investment decision making or capital expenditure decision or you can call them as an analysis of capital expenditure okay so what is this actually so it is nothing but the capital a capital itself it says that huge amount of money okay it has to be efficiently used it has to be efficiently allocated okay so it involves decision to commit the firm's funds to long term assets ultimately okay so capital budgeting or investment decisions are of considerable importance to the firm because it affects the in the long run it affects the growth of the firm it affects the profitability it affects the risk aspect okay so the company is going or not and moreover you need to take into consideration from the society point of view this long term decisions which has to be taken by the council plays a major role so henceforth it is very significant yeah so let us just look at your definition of your capital budgeting so uh, capital is nothing but as we know it is a non human resource it is very scarce it is not in abundance okay and budget is all always we say it is a quanti quanti quantified planning okay which guides future activities of an enterprise so ultimately capital budgeting is nothing but it refers to the planned and predecided allocation of funds available to the, available to the business enterprise to long term assets so that you will achieve a maximum profitability of the resources okay uh, how significant is this one okay how important okay what effect it just creates on the firm so first and the foremost thing is it affects the growth of the firm okay because it involves a huge amount of money 10 lakhs of money or crores of money which you are uh, which you are investing okay so it will have a long term impact as such so the firm's growth okay is decided on the basis of the capital budgeting decision okay then the next one is it affects the risk of the firm so uh, see when it is going to be a short term you can estimate what is the risk you can predict the risk as such when it is going to be a long term okay there are lot of risk and uncertainties that are possible due to so much of changes environmental changes okay so it affects the risk of the firm and of course it involves a commitment of large amount of funds 
and once you have decided this much you are going to invest in long term funds it is irreversible any mistakes any blunders you are creating okay any um, any fault that you that has arise means you cannot reverse it back it is not like uh, you purchased stock worth of 10000 there was a mistake it has become obsolete so you can just return it and you can get its scrap value Whereas with regarding to in capital budgeting, if you commit a mistake, you cannot reverse back to your original position. If at all you are reversing back, you will incur huge loss. So that has to be taken into consideration. And ultimately, it is a most difficult decision to be made. And um, compared to the past, so now we are in the cutthroat competitive world, okay, where there has been a change in the attitude of the people. There has been a change that is happening in the economy. Okay, so now the situation is very uncertain. So changes are taking places more quickly. So in that way, the financial manager all the most uh, uh, very uh, what is it, very crucial in taking up this decision. So in that way, it will have a long term implication. Fine. Next, we just move on to what are all the types of investment decisions that could be made. Okay, so what for you're uh, doing it? Okay, this this major expansion. What is what is for you're doing it? So one thing is that you want to increase your revenue, right? So that's the reason you want to expand your concern. You want to diversify your product from one line of product to other line of product. If you just take into consideration the reliance, okay, they had been started with the garments, then they have just come up with the petrochemicals, then they have just gone with regarding to uh, uh, phones, telephones, telecommunication. Okay, then they have moved to your retail outlet. So they want to expand, they want to diversify from one line of business to other line of business. So the ultimate essence or what is the result that they want to get is they want to increase their revenue. So that's a major thing. So for that they make up a capital expenditure budget. Okay, the other one is they want to reduce the cost. They are using a present machinery. So that machinery is outdated. Okay, or it is creating a lot of issues. Okay, they want to reduce the cost. Okay, uh, uh, it consumes so many uh, people, employees. By mechanization, you can reduce the number of employees. So in that case, you go for what we call it as a replacement and modernization. Okay, so these are the two types of <coughs> expenditure capital expenditure that you can make one is for expansion and diversification and one is for replacement and modernization okay and what are all the different proposals that we have okay so the proposals are nothing but the project offers that you have okay it could be an independent proposal it could be a contingent proposal it could be a mutually exclusive proposals so what do you mean by contingent what do you mean by independent what do you mean by mutually exclusive proposals so mutually exclusive proposal is nothing but if a and b two proposals are there if you are selecting a ultimately you have to live about b okay so that's what we call it as a mutually exclusive uh, investments that is you have an option of selecting one if you are selecting x you have to forego y okay so that is what is your mutually exclusive investment the next one is nothing but independent so independent is nothing but choosing the both doesn't affect the other aspect Okay, so if you are, if I'm just purchasing uh, mission, okay, X, okay, I'm also purchasing mission Y, so they are not uh, dependent as such. So you, I'm just investing in both the aspects. So that is what is independent investment. So the next comes your contingents. Contingent is nothing but which is dependent on. Okay, say for example, if I'm starting an industry uh, in a remote area, okay, I need to simultaneously. Uh, spend money on developing the infrastructure facilities over there okay with regarding to your schools development of schools development of shops markets all those things so that is what is contingent so you are starting up the concern over there you have to look in for all your starting up all other infrastructure you are creating all of the infrastructure facilities for your workforce okay so that is what is what we call it as a contingent investment so what are all the different proposals that we have okay for these aspects uh, the finance manager has to spend this capital budgeting decision. Fine. Uh, yes. So, uh, if you are just decided to uh, invest, okay, in your long-term assets, okay, what are all the aspects that you will consider? On what basis you will evaluate that investment as a wise investment? So, first and foremost, you should predict what are what are it's going to be its cash inflows. Okay, right over a period, how long the mission will come, how long that particular, uh, uh, what I mean to say, that investment will reap you the benefit. Okay, so how long it comes. So that is what is, it should consider all cash inflows. 
okay then you should decide about what we call it as an required rate of return that is nothing but we call it as an opportunity cost of capital so one thing we need to understand the money whichever that you're investing in your long term okay instead of giving it to your uh, equity shareholders okay you are investing in uh, some assets okay right so the return that that has been foregone by the suppose if that money is within the within the hands of the equity shareholders they would have invested and they would have earned something more okay so that they are foregoing so that rate of return that we need to calculate that's what we call it as a cost of capital okay right then you should rec recognize the fact that bigger cash flows are naturally preferable and the earlier cash flows because as time pass by the risk is more lot of uncertainties are there nothing could be predicted so earlier the uh, return back is best one and the bigger the amount is the best one so these are the uh, investment evaluation criteria okay next we move on to what are all the techniques that are available to evaluate the investment okay so there are uh, it does just broadly classified into non discounted cash flow technique and the other one is discounted cash flow technique so what is non discounted cash cash flow technique is nothing but it takes the raw money okay whatever that you are receiving after a period of years it take as such okay so that is what we call it as a non discounted so what do you mean by discounted is nothing but it takes into consideration the time value of money okay the rupee that you have today in your hand is more worthier than a rupee that you receive tomorrow okay you know very well okay if with with the help of 10000 rupees you are going to acquire a refrigerator or something like that okay with the same 10000 rupees after 2 years you cannot acquire the same refrigerator because the time value of money gets depleted because of inflation okay so those aspects will be taken into consideration by the discounted cash flow techniques okay so we just quickly go through with regarding to your uh, uh, the first method that is non discounting method so that is nothing but payback period method so what is actually payback period method i have invested so how fast i'll be getting back that my investment in how many years i'll be getting back my investment so that is what we call it as a length of time required to recover initial outlay on the project okay so how will we go in for this one is nothing but it is initial investment divided by annual cash inflows okay so here you need to go in for we are not taking up an accounting profit we are taking up a cash inflows so cash inflows here it means it is net profit before depreciation but after tax okay because depreciation we know it is a non fund item which should have been deducted and you would have calculated the tax then you have to add that that okay so that is what it takes into consideration the cash flow okay and uh, of course when we have different proposals whichever proposal is giving a lesser payback period that has to be accepted okay so here the things are when the cash inflows are equal you can apply the above formula okay when the cash inflows are unequal you have to go in for accumulating your cash inflows then find out at which year you are able to reach that initial investment so that is what is what we call it as a payback period method so ultimately it's a very simple method okay it is very easy to understand okay it never requires any kind of uh, formulas or the present value all those things it is very simple technique okay and uh, it it will tell you a quicker feedback there will not be any risk involved because it tells you how quick you are able to reimburse the money okay and it is liquid in nature okay but when you look at the limitations it will also doesn't take into consideration what is the benefit that you're giving after the payback period method okay and the cash flow pattern is also ignored say for example um, both the proposals are is in a position to give you a return okay within span of 2 years but the first proposal is giving you a return more return the first year and the second year lesser return the second proposal is giving a first year lesser return and the second year more return okay both the things will be selected so you will not understand the pattern in the consideration okay and it will not consider the entire series of how much of cash inflows totally it gives so these are the drawbacks of your payback period method okay so ultimately if you just look at with regarding to the major payback major drawbacks of payback period method is it will not take into consideration the time value of money 
okay and it will not take into consideration the post payback period profitability okay so in order to overcome that we have got what we call as a discounted payback period method and post payback period method so discounted payback period method where you will take into consideration the time value of money okay so that that particular uh, uh, problem is solved the other one is post payback after the payback period what is the profit it is deriving that also you just go in for the calculation okay so that is what is uh, discounted payback period is all about okay next we just move on to accounting rate of return method otherwise you call it as the average rate of return method so actually this is an accounting concept okay where your ultimately the net earnings talks about it is after depreciation and after tax okay so how much of earnings so it's not an earnings at the beginning or it's not the earnings at the end you take an average net earnings so your average net earnings is your net profit after depreciation and tax divided by your initial investment or average investment okay if at all any uh, uh, scrap value is there if at all any working capital is there it is better to add up both scrap and additional working capital okay so when you go in for the calculation of average investment it is original investment minus scrap divided by 2 plus additional working capital plus scrap okay so that is what is what we call it as an accounting rate of met return method so it just follows your accounting rules and regulations okay uh, next we just move on to discounting methods so discounting method talks about npv okay so what is npv net present value method okay that is uh, if i am receiving after a span of 1 year okay 2000 rupees means today what is the present value of that 2000 okay so that is what is what we call as a present value okay i will not take the absolute figures i'll see to it for a today's uh, position what is its value okay so what i am doing it i am discounting the future returns that i am getting it okay so that i am taking into consideration the inflation aspect also okay so that is what is your npv is all about okay so any financial action that has a positive npv creates wealth for your shareholders okay uh, uh, i'll let me just tell you with a uh, very good example uh, say you have a fund to the worth of 10000 rupees okay in that 2500 you are investing in one project okay one proposal and by doing a npv you came to understand that 2500 has become 2750 okay so now 250 rupees which has been suppose if it is in the funds it will not be used okay you would not have improvised the wealth of your shareholders so the ultimate as ultimate purpose of your financial marriage manager is nothing but you have to maximize the shareholders wealth okay the shareholders return equity shareholders return okay so that discount rate is a one how will you calculate that discount rate what we call it as a hurdle rate or cost of capital it just depends on the time and the risk preference of the suppliers of the capital okay how much they expect okay so we just look at with regarding to uh, what are the steps okay in calculating your npv so the so first and foremost is you will calculate what are the total cash inflows that you receive out of a project then you take your discount factor okay you just convert the cash flows into a present value same way the cash outflow also will be converted into a present value so when your cash present value of cash inflows are greater than the present value of cash outflows you can accept that proposal okay so that's what how this acceptance rules of npv works is you can accept the project when npv is positive okay you can re reject the project when npv is negative you may accept the project when npv is zero that is nothing but it just equalizes to your irr internal rate of return okay next we just move on to the concept called as the next discounting rate of return method is internal rate of return method okay so the other names for irr is nothing but it is called as yield on investment or maximum efficiency of capital or marginal productivity of capital or rate of return or you can call them as a time adjusted rate of return and so on why it is called as internal rate of return okay here the rate whichever that you decides okay that has been decided internally okay so what we will do is we will see to what what is the present value of cash inflows okay what is the present value of cash inflows 
outflows so you, you utilizes thus on that basis of the rate okay you fix up that rate okay it has not been decided that rate is not been okay that rate will be fixed on the basis of the cash inflows you are receiving it okay so that not that rate is not fixed externally okay henceforth you call the lien as it is an internal rate of return method okay fine so this uh, <coughs> you can just say it is the discount rate that which equates the present value of net cash inflows with the aggregate present value of cash outflows of the project okay uh, when you just look at the steps okay uh, you have what we call it as a payback period that is initial investment divided by annual average cash inflow so you will get one factor that factor in the annuity table you have to look in for the closest value okay that rate you have to choose it okay when you have what we call it as a two not any anything which is close to that rate okay by the trial and error method okay you can just calculate apply the interpolation formula that is lower rate <coughs> plus difference in calculated present value and required rate of cash outflow okay and uh, divided by difference in calculated present value into difference in rate okay so one thing we have to understand when the cash inflows are lesser okay then you go for the higher discount rate when the cash inflows are more then you go for a lower discount rate okay so this is how your irr will be calculated so when you just go in for the acceptance rule of irr you can accept the project when your irr is greater than the opportunity cost of capital so when your irr is lesser than the opportunity cost of capital you can reject it okay when it is equal it depends upon you you may either accept or de uh, reject depending upon so many other factors <coughs> uh, the last discounting method is nothing but excess present value index method okay so it is also called as benefit cost ratio right so what is this is nothing but you just go in for total present value of cash inflows divided by total present value of cash outflows okay so <clears throat> what is the difference between npv and excess present value indexes it will tell you relatively uh, which project is the best one okay say for example in the case of npv okay on the basis of the npv you choose which one is the best one okay but regarding to excess present value in relative to its input that is on the basis of the cash outlay you also uh, compare your cash inflow and come to the conclusion so that is what we call it as an excess present value index method okay so lastly i just move on to capital ration so what is actually a capital ration is nothing but where you have so much of funds okay you have different uh, pro projects are there okay so which project to select okay which project to select so as i just told you compared to all the other methods okay irr and npv are very prominently used method the best method which are which are free from limitations which takes into consideration okay the time value of money and which will boost up the wealth maximization of the equity shareholders okay so on the basis of the profitability index on the basis of irr you can rank rank the project which is giving you an highest npv which is giving you an highest irr that would be selected okay you can arrange the descending order and you can choose it so that is what is what we call it as a capital rationing so in simple words you have different proposals you have some amount of money that amount of money have to be properly used profitably used okay so you have to choose among the projects which is the best suitable one so that is what is what we call it as a capital rationing okay so in sport i just summarize the concept which you have read uh so ultimately the investments involves cash flows over a longer period okay the profitability of an investment is ultimately determined by evaluating its cash inflows okay so we have seen about certain discounting methods like npv irr and profitability index method okay same way some non discounting methods like uh, payback period method accounting rate of return method okay so each and every method has its own limitations and advantages are there but comparatively when you evaluate all the methods okay both irr and npv methods okay takes into consideration time value of money and also it just serves the purpose of wealth maximization of an equity shareholders 
okay thank you